What's up guys, Stu here. And today we're talking about a film which made me take a biblical pilgrimage through London to go and see. Uh, I'm not lying, in this heat and the length I had to go, I did feel a little bit like I was in the Bible. But it was absolutely worth it, that film was Leave No Trace. Which is something that only recently popped up on my radar, and as a result of that I hadn't really taken any time to check out exactly what it was about, I'd only seen posters and a couple of thoughts from people online about the film, I hadn't seen any trailers or anything, so I went into it very blind and wow, what, I, I mean it, would, it really blew me away this film. So it's directed by Deborah Granick, um, who you may know as directors of other kind of indie films such as Winter's Bone, uh, which if you remember was also the film which gave the whole world Jennifer Lawrence, um, which I'm okay with. And this one is essentially the story of a war vet and his daughter who are living in the forest and they're found by local authorities because it's obviously not legal to be living in a park, it's public property, and they basically moved into kind of, well, normal, in quotation marks, life uh, with society to get home and they're allowed to live like that and we basically follow the relationship as it goes through these different changes in their environment, setting, situation, whatever you want to call it. And it's a very kind of quiet, contemplative film which absolutely packs a punch. I mean it's, it's an incredibly raw, emotional, beautiful film which did pretty much everything I wanted a little indie film to do Man, I loved it. So it's obviously focused very much on this relationship between father and daughter here, and it's played wonderfully by the wonderful Ben Foster and a newcomer who I've not seen acting anything else before, Thomas in McKenzie. I think I'm saying her name right? Probably not. Oh my god, she blew me away. She was so good in this film. She comes out this role with such a kind of quiet, delicate, thoughtful approach, which you just don't really expect to see from a lot of child actors today. And she absolutely smashed it. I was completely captivated by her throughout the entire film. And Ben Foster in a similar fashion, a very kind of quiet, subdued performance, which absolutely works alongside Thomas McKenzie's one. I just thought the two of them work so well together. And it means that very quickly on in the film, you're able to get on board with them as a father and daughter. The relationship feels nothing short of real, to be honest, which makes all the things they go through as a family in the film all the more impactful and moving. Uh, because, yeah, this film, it really did get me. It really did choke me up. I mean, I challenge anyone to get to the end of this film without floods of tears coming out their eyes. But again, it's one of those films which, in the best way, is never trying to visibly push your buttons. It's just showing a relationship, and it comes at it with such a delicate fashion that you just can't help but get swept up in it. And then it means all the smaller moments in the film, which, in other hands, may have been a little bit more kind of uh, on the sleeve, overt, come off much more powerful to me. But there's smaller things that are said, but also not said uh, between these characters. And that's something that I think Deborah Granick absolutely nails and captures in this film, and she has done in a lot of her previous work before. A lot of the drama um, from the characters in this film, it's not stuff that's said. I mean, it's a very quiet film, at least in the beginning of this film. Not really many lines are said between the two characters. They're just living together. But you get a fantastic sense of what they're feeling in the moment and how they're reacting to each other in the environment as opposed to exactly what they're saying or fighting with each other about. It's a film which revels in the quiet moments and just the mundaneness of uh, life or what these characters might be going through. There's absolutely different directors that might have handled this film in a very different way which would have been absolutely not as good. <laughs> but I love the way that Deborah Granite comes out this one. I love the way that she films the different environments that they're in because these characters are going through different situations and they're misplaced in different environments. So you get like the forest, but you also get the outside world outside of the forest. And it starts off by really honing in just how comfortable these characters are in the environment of the forest. And the way that that's all shot really does help you to feel like this is a home for them, you know? So you often get quite wide shots with the two of them making their way through the bushes. And it's often quite hard to work out where they are and they're kind of rising or lowering into the trees. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's a really beautifully shot film. But it's also beautiful in the way it's written and the interactions that these characters have. Not necessarily just between the two of them as father and daughter, but between them and the outside world and the way that these two characters react differently to the outside world. Because Ben Foster's character obviously has this very troubled past, which means that he's not quite as open to the outside world, I think, as his daughter is. And his daughter's trying to come to terms with that, as well as kind of growing up herself, which is something that I thought was handled really well in the film. This kind of coming of age feeling of of her trying to work out exactly what's happening in her life and how she's gonna grow up. I mean, there's a lovely moment where she's learning about bees um, with a woman she's not met before in this new um, plot of land. And this woman's teaching her about bees and then later on you see a kind of reflection of that scene between her and her father. She's teaching him things, he's teaching her things. She's learning things from all these different avenues 
Um, it's just beautiful to watch. It's lovely. It was really gorgeous. It's absolutely everything I liked seeing in indie gems like this, and I'm so happy that I went out of my way to go and see it. So if you're thinking about going to see it and it's like too far for you, or it's only showing at a very obscure little cinema, if you can get to it, definitely go and see Leave No Trace. Do not miss this one. You will not regret it. But what about you guys? Have you seen Leave No Trace yet? It is in a limited release, I think, in the States and the UK at the moment. So if you have managed to get out and check it out, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'd love to know. And as usual, if you enjoyed this review and you want to see me talk about more shit, please do consider clicking subscribe. It really helps you out. It means that you will not be missing any of my future reviews going forward. So yeah, click that subscribe button or the bell, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go live in a forest for a bit. It's on my mind for some reason. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers.